Thank you for coming to check us out here today at New York Eternix. My name is Kenny, as most of you already know, and for those of you who don't, welcome to the channel. This is New York Eternix, your source for everything quail and game bird related. If this is your first time visiting the channel, or if you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified in real time whenever we do leave new content on the channel. Before we begin, I'd like to let you all know that we are still running a contest for 30 free Caternix hatching eggs, and that's courtesy of White's Family Farmhouse located in Maine, New York. Not to be confused with Maine the state, but Maine, which is a small town located right here in the state of New York. For details on how to participate in this contest, stay tuned until the end of the video, and I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. I'd like to start off by saying that there are new world quail and there are old world quail. In today's video, we'll be discussing old world quail. I did a video a few weeks ago on the topic of new world quail, so if you haven't seen that one yet, be sure to click on the card above. The link is also below in the description. We'll be looking at a few quail today that a lot of you didn't even know existed. I can definitely say that in my case, a lot of new research had to be done in order to cover this topic, and I'm definitely going to have to split this video into two parts. Old world quail is a collective term for a bunch of birds in the pheasant family Phasianidae. Their collective noun is flock, bevy, or covey, so take your pick. I'm going to leave the extinct species out. We won't go into detail on those. Maybe we'll save that for another video. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see that happen. I'll be glad to oblige if that's what you guys want to see. But in the meantime, they are worth at least honorable mention, so rest in peace to the New Zealand quail and the Canary Island quail. I'll also not be covering the Japanese Caternix in this video. That bird has its own video, which you can also watch by clicking the card above or by visiting the link below. We'll start this video out with the common quail, whose scientific name is Caternix Caternix. We're starting here because I briefly spoke about this bird in the past and it's almost identical to the Japanese quail whose scientific name is Caternix japonica. In the past, these two species were considered conspecific. The common quail is mainly migratory, breeding in the western Palearctic regions and wintering in Africa in the southern part of India. It's listed by the IUCN or the International Union for the Conservation of Nature as least concerned meaning that this quail is not in danger of going extinct. This bird is sometimes kept as poultry, just like the Japanese quail. Specifically, the word Caternix is Latin for common quail. The Caternix genus was introduced to the world in 1764 by French naturalist François-Alexandre Pierre de Gassot. There are five subspecies, all discovered between 1758 and 1917. The male common quail will usually arrive in the breeding area well before the females arrive. Instead of building a nest, the female will usually form a bowl shape in the ground with her feet and beak, scraping away at the dirt. She'll lay a clutch of eggs, usually between 8 and 13, that are laid in intervals of around 24 hours apart. The eggs take about 17 to 20 days to hatch, and the chicks will usually stay within the family group for about a month or two. Once at about a year old, they will start to breed and will have only one brood in a lifetime. When it comes to the common quail, exercise caution if you're hunting migratory birds. You may want to do some research on something called caternism. I did a video on this a while back. The card is above and the link is below in the description. Be sure to check that out. Next, we have the stubble quail, whose scientific name is Caternix pectoralis. This quail is native to Australia and the most common quail on the continent. As per the IUCN, this quail is of least concern no threat whatsoever of extinction. It is also known as the gray quail and the pectoral quail. The stubble quail was considered conspecific with the now extinct New Zealand quail. In 2009, a very close phylogenic relationship was found between the two species after some research was done. It was confirmed that they are, or were, in fact, a separate species. Their geographic location happened when the Tasman Sea became too wide for the birds to fly across. Looking at this bird is easily identified as a quail with its telltale physical features. The stubble quail is a little larger than other native species and have a wingspan of between 25 and 33 centimeters. The breeding habits of the stubble quail are a bit different than the common quail. Breeding pairs may stay together for the whole year and will seek each other out if separated. 
the female will usually lay a clutch of about seven or eight eggs, which will hatch after about 18 days. These birds have a habit of building nests in crops that are close to harvest, so their nests get destroyed pretty often. The parents, the parents will kick the chicks out once they've reached about six weeks of age and they have all of their feathers. Stubble quail are nomadic and will move to another area when resources are low, but they tend to scatter when this happens. They are usually seen by themselves, but on occasion can be observed in small groups. This species is legally hunted in Australia, but there are strict regulations in place so they're not completely wiped out of existence or put into a situation where that danger exists. It has evolved to survive in arid conditions, so it needs a lot less water than other species. As a matter of fact, as long as it has green vegetation, it can go without water altogether. Then there's the rain quail, whose scientific name is Caternix coral mandelica. You can find this little guy on the Indian subcontinent. It ranges from Pakistan, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. The male has a black patch on his breast area and a black and white pattern on his head. The female rain quail looks just like the female common quail along with the Japanese common quail but the spots on his chest are a little bit more delicate so good luck with that. It has a call that is unmistakable from the common quail though if that helps. Now the rain quail likes to eat seeds and grasses like a lot of other species along with insect larvae and small invertebrate. Breeding will take place with this species mainly after the start of the southwesterly monsoon season in June. Like the common quail they do lay eggs on the ground in little scrapes with about 8 eggs to a clutch. These eggs will hatch after around 16 to 18 days and the chicks will stay with the parents for around 8 months. The rain quail is listed by the IUCN as least concerned. No danger of extinction for this species either. The Harlequin Quail. So the Harlequin Quail, whose scientific name is Caternix de la Gorge, is named after the collector Adolphe de la Gorge. This is my pronunciation and I'm sticking with it. This poor guy died of malaria at sea at the age of 35. The Harlequin Quail can be found in Kenya, Uganda, and most of Madagascar. This one is a tropical species that inhabits open grasslands and will occasionally take refuge in cultivated areas. The males have a black and white pattern on their head like a lot of other quail males. The abdomen is usually black. The females have a faint black ring around the neck and a brown abdomen. They usually weigh between 57 and 71 grams. Harlequin quail do something called tidbitting. Chickens and other birds do it as well. The male will offer an insect or something like that to the female, also raising its wings to chase the female around. The males in a covey will act aggressively towards each other when breeding season nears. Like a few other species of quail that we've already mentioned, the harlequin quail will lay its eggs in a scrape on the ground, usually three to nine eggs in a clutch. The incubation period is 17 to 18 days and the hen may lay up to three clutches in a single season. This bird is listed by the IUCN as being of least concern. Hakuna Matata. Following the harlequin quail in today's video is going to be the brown quail, whose scientific name is Caternix gypsilophora. It's also been called the swamp quail, the silver quail, and the Tasmanian quail. It is considered Australian true. Like most other species of quail, this is a small ground dwelling bird. It is native to mainland Australia, Tasmania, and Papua New Guinea. The brown quail has been introduced to Fiji and of course New Zealand. This was back in the 1860s and 1870s. The brown quail has a very large and populous range and is considered by the IUCN as least concerned. I'm pretty sure this species will be around for years to come. The people of the West Arnhem Territory have their own names for this species but I can't pronounce that either. The brown quail will usually grow to a length of 17 to 22 centimeters and weigh between 75 and 140 grams. Their colors vary across the range. The male is usually a speckled reddish brown with black on the head and upper neck with brown underparts and always has a black chevron shaped barring. They have very short tails as well. The female looks very similar but is paler in comparison. Not unlike other species, the brown quail is distributed all across agricultural areas, wet grasslands, shrublands, and freshwater wetlands. It is considered a lowland species but in New Zealand has been found at altitudes of up to 1,000 meters and in New Guinea up to 3,700 meters. Since its introduction in New Zealand, it has shown presence in the North Islands and certain offshore islands. It is thought that this introduction, along with the introduction of other quail, 
that failed to establish may have played a part in the demise of the New Zealand quail, which was an endemic species that became extinct shortly after those introductions, possibly due to a lack of resistance to some new diseases. It is a quail, so it would prefer to run and hide rather than fly if it can be helped. The brown quail feeds on seeds, grasses, and insects, along with small invertebrae. They breed in the springtime and the female's clutch is usually around a half a dozen or so eggs. And those are incubated after about 20 to 21 days, and at about two weeks after hatching, the male will usually take over all parental responsibilities so that the female can start on the next clutch of eggs. So we've covered brown, now let's move on to blue. The blue quail, whose scientific name is Caternix adansoni, is named after the French naturalist Michel Adanson. There is a bit of conflict or confusion, whichever you want to call it, in regard to its genus. The IOC World Bird List has the blue quail listed in the genus Excalfactoria, while the Handbook of the Birds of the World places it in the Cynosius genus. It's sometimes considered a subspecies of the king quail. If you're looking, you can find the blue quail in Sub-Saharan Africa. It ranges from Sierra Leone to Ethiopia and south to Zambia and eastward to Kenya. They stay away from drier areas, preferring to live near rivers and other bodies of water for obvious reasons. They're not stubble quail. The blue quail is average size for a quail, growing to about 14 to 17 centimeters and weighing about 45 grams. It has yellow legs and the species is sexually dimorphic, meaning that the male and the female differ by sight along with the obvious sexual differences. The male's plumage is mostly blue with brown patches on his wings. It has a black beak and a brown head. It has a black and white throat. The female is orange in a few areas with brownish beak and blackish bars on her underside. The blue quail is migratory and will migrate to areas at the start of the rainy season and leaves when it starts to dry up. Leaves, seeds, and mollusks are on the menu for this bird. It has displayed monogamy. The hens will lay their eggs on the ground in a scrape and there's usually three to nine eggs in a single clutch. The eggs will hatch after about 16 days, and once hatched, the eggs are pretty much independent. The IUCN is concerned about the population of the blue quail as it has a large range and is still showing no decline in numbers. It has a stable population trend. So the last old world quail in the genus Caternix that we'll be covering in this video is the king quail, whose scientific name is Caternix chinensis. It is also known as the blue-breasted quail, the Asian blue quail, the Chinese painted quail, or Cheng Chi. Don't let the name fool you. The king quail is the smallest true quail ranging in the wild from southeastern Asia to Oceania, and it has 10 different subspecies. I mentioned earlier about a few failed attempts at introducing quail species to New Zealand. This is one of those genuses that ended up being a failed attempt. It is common to mistake this bird for the button quail, which is only distantly related. The male king quail comes in a few different colors, including blue, brown, silver, maroon like the five, dark brown, and almost completely black. Their feet are orange and especially hard, suitable for life on the ground. This is a feature that many other game birds have. The female comes in similar colors to the male, but never blue. They have been reported to live up to 13 years in captivity, but only three to six on average, and about a year and a half in the wild. The male king quail are highly aggressive with each other during the mating season and will fight for the right to mate. The quail who comes out the victor gets to mate with all of the females, and a day or two later, the females will begin to lay fertilized eggs. The clutch size is anywhere from five to a dozen eggs. All eggs are laid before the hen gets broody and will start to incubate. Those eggs are hatched after about 16 days. Numerous mutations of the king quail have been developed over the years. They are great in aviaries because they stay on the ground and don't bother the other birds. They'll keep the floor of the aviary clean of any dropped food and they are very low cost to raise and maintain. So they're excellent domestic birds. They have been known to be very tame with human touch. The king quail has been known to eat small bugs and various grasses that are available at any given time. The species is listed as threatened on the Victorian Flora and Fauna Guarantee Act, but is not listed by the IUCN as being endangered at all. So that covers the Caternix genus, and I have one more old world quail that we'll go over in this video, and that will be the snow mountain quail. The snow mountain quail is in the genus Anorophasis, and its scientific name is Anorophasis monorthonix. This quail is pretty big, measuring an average of 28 centimeters. It can be found in the alpine grasslands. It is the only member of its genus, making it pretty unique. Its plumage is brown and, like most other quail, has yellow legs. 
the underparts of the female are usually a little lighter than the males and has more black bars across the chest. The snow mountain quail is endemic to Indonesia and New Guinea and is confined to New Guinea's highest elevations, the snow and star mountains. The remoteness of its habitat is a great protector. The diet of this quail is limited, mainly due to the habitat, but consists of seeds, flowers, leaves, and other vegetation. The females lay small clutches of eggs, and those eggs take about 20 days to hatch. The IUCN lists the snow mountain quail as near threatened because of its limited range. And parts of that range are becoming more accessible to humans. That could spell trouble for this particular species. In the next video, we'll continue going over old world quail. This time we'll talk about quail in the genus Perdicula along with the other. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and then hit that notification bell so you're notified in real time when the next video is released. If you're still here watching this video, perfect. I promise that I'll let you know how to participate in the contest for 30 free hatching eggs from White's Family Farmhouse, which is located in Maine, New York. Not to be confused with Maine the state, but Maine the town which is located in the beautiful state of New York. In order to participate in this contest, leave a like for the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, then head over to Facebook, join the group, leave a comment on the official thread. You'll be entered for a chance to win 30 free Caternix quail hatching eggs, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you once again for coming to check us out here today at New York Caternix. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those below. Also, please leave a like for the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Hit that notification bell so you're notified right away when there are new videos released on the channel. We here at New York Caternix really appreciate the support so far and look forward to hearing from you when we drop the next video. See you soon.